Hello and welcome back. Uh, for this video, we're going to show how to solve radical equations and actually we're going to do specifically uh, square roots. Okay, so square root equations instead. Now a couple of the rules you need to know here is, uh, or steps, step one is to isolate the square root or one half power because one half power is a square root. Step two, square both sides to eliminate the square root. Number three is simply continue solving for the variable. And the last one, an important one, always check your answers. When you start working with square roots, equations of square roots, you'll find out that sometimes answers that you calculate don't actually work in the original problems. And any problem you calculate that doesn't really work, or any solution you calculate that doesn't really work, is called an extraneous solution. And you'll never know if you have an extraneous solution unless you actually check your work. All right, so for our first example here, we want to isolate the square root, which is this one right here. So we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. And we end up with the square root of 5v minus 5 equals 5. Then our next step is to square both sides because a power of 2 will undo a square root. And on the right-hand side, we get 25. On the left hand side, the only thing that's going to happen is the square is going to take the square root out and leave 5v minus 5. And then we just keep solving for the variable like normal, so we're going to add 5 to both sides. So 5v is going to equal 30 divided by 5. v appears to equal 6. But if you want to be absolutely certain that's correct, you should put the 6 back up here in place of v. So we end up with 6 plus square root of. Now when I put a 6 here, 6 times 5 will give me 30 minus 5 equals 11. And then evaluate, so I have 6 plus the square root of 25 equals 11. And 6 plus, and then the square root of 25 is 5. Now one of the things you need to remember here is when we do square root equations, when we take the square root of a number like this 25 right here and we get 5, we're always taking the principal root, okay, so the, the root that's positive. We ignore the negatives when we're working with these problems. So 6 plus 5 is 11 equals 11. That checks out. Therefore, 6 is a solution. Okay, so this problem here, I'm not actually going to alter it just slightly because I don't have any with half power. So I'm going to put a plus 3 to the 1 half power plus 4 equals 5. So even if I see a 1 half power in there, that's still a square root equation. So we're still going to isolate that first. So add or subtract 4 from both sides. So a plus 3 to the 1 half will equal, when I subtract 4 from this 5 here, I end up with 1. Then to undo the half power or the square root, we're still going to raise to the second power. And a power to a power rule here says to multiply these together, and that's where you get 1. A half times 2 is 1, and anything to the first power is an identity. So we end up having a plus 3 equals... And if I square this side like I'm supposed to, I still end up with 1. So it wouldn't matter if you forgot there. But we still have to continue solving for A. So we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. So 1 minus 3 is going to give us negative 2. Now it looks like the solution is negative 2. So we're going to take the negative 2 and put it back up in here and solve. So we have the square root of negative 2 plus 3 plus the 4 on the outside should equal 5. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So I got a square root of 1 plus 4 equals 5. And the square root of 1, again, the principal root is just 1, plus 4 equals 5. 5 equals 5, so that checks out. So negative 2 is our solution. Okay, so the rest of these, I'm just going to leave them as square roots. I'm not going to raise them to the 1 half power, but you can see the 1 half power is a square root, and you're still going to square it to undo it. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of the 9, because I want to isolate the radical. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides, and I end up with 6 equal to square root of negative 4 minus 5r. To undo the square root, we're going to square both sides. 6 squared is 36 equals, this cancels out with the radical, leaving negative 4 minus 5r. I want to add 4 to both sides, so I end up with 40 equals negative 5r. Divide by negative 5 on both sides, and r ends up equaling negative 8, or at least appears equal negative 8. I should put negative 8 back in place of r here, so square root of negative 4 minus 5 times negative 8 plus 9. This whole thing should equal 15. So we'll do the calculation inside. Negative 4. Now negative 5 times the negative 8 is going to give me a positive 40. 
that's under the radical, plus 9 equals 15. Under the radical, I end up with a 36, plus 9 equals 15. Square root of six, 36 is 6, plus 9 equals 15. Remember, I'm taking the principal root when I do the square root. And 6 plus 9 is 15 equals 15. It checks out. Okay, on this next one, the one problem we have here is there is a negative 7 out in front of the radical. That's a negative 7 times the radical. Remember, we have to isolate the radical. So in order to get rid of that negative 7, we're going to divide both sides by negative 7. And on the right-hand side, negative 7 over negative 7 becomes 1, leaving you with a radical of x over 9. And the left-hand side here is just going to give us a positive 8. Now to get rid of the radical, we're going to square both sides. We end up with 64 is equal to x over 9. Now we've got to multiply both sides by 64 or by 9. And that will give us x equals 576. And it looks like 576 is the answer, but the only way to know for sure is to go back to the original and put a 576 here. So I have a negative 7 radical. 576 over 9. That whole thing should equal negative 56. So we're going to check it out. So inside the radical, 576 divided by 9 is going to give us 64. So negative 7 radical 64 equals negative 56. And the square root of 64 is just 8. And then negative 7 times 8 is negative 56 equals negative 56. That checks out. So 576 is our solution. All right, so here's where we start to get a little bit different. You'll notice we have a variable on both sides, and one of the variables is outside the radical or outside the square root. So it's going to create a potential for a quadratic, which means we could end up with two solutions or two potential solutions. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the square root is already isolated. So all we got to do to undo that is raise both sides to the second power and end up with 3k equals k squared. Now, one of the techniques for solving quadratics is to force the whole thing to equal zero. So I'm going to subtract 3k from both sides, and I end up with a zero here, k squared minus 3k. Now, to solve this, we're going to actually factor. So you'll notice that both of these terms here have a k involved, so I'm going to factor a k out. That leaves k minus 3 left over. Well, now I have 2 numbers being multiplied together equaling zero. So k times the entire quantity of k minus three equals zero. So what that tells us is that k equals zero or k minus three equals zero. When I multiply these two numbers together and get a zero out, that means one of those two values has equal zero. Well, one of them is already k equals zero, so I have to go back and check that. When I solve this one over here, I end up with k equaling three. So my two potential solutions are zero and three. But the only way to know for sure is to substitute them back in for the k. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. 3, and in place of k, I'm going to put 0 equals. In place of the other k, I'm going to put 0. So that's this one. And the next one, I'm going to put in a 3. So square root of 3 times 3 equals, and the k over there was also 3. So over here, we have 3 times 0, which is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. 0 equals 0 checks out. And over here we have square root of 3 times 3, which is 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. 3 equals 3. And that checks out. And it turns out that both of these answers are correct, 0 and 3. Notice that the radical is already isolated, so square both sides. We end up with x squared equals and 56 minus x. Now again, I have a quadratic here. So in order to solve it, I have to force the thing to equal zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is add x to both sides. So I get rid of the x on this side. Then I'm going to subtract 56 from both sides. So x squared plus x minus 56 will give me zero. And now I have to factor this quadratic trinomial. And it's going to factor into two binomials multiplied together equal to zero. The only way to get an x squared is an x times an x. And the uh, only way to get a 56, well, I got a list of factors. You know, we got 1, 56, 2, 26, 7, and 8. I'm going to stop at 7 and 8 because what I'm looking for is a 1 in the middle that is positive, but when I multiply them, I get a negative 56. So I want the sum of these two numbers to come out to a positive 1, which means I have to make the 7 negative. So I'll have an x plus 8 
and an x minus 7. And again, we're back to the product of two factors equaling 0. So i got to set each one equal to 0. So x plus 8 equals 0, or x minus 7 equals 0. So on the left-hand side, when I subtract 8 from both sides, x ends up equaling negative 8. And when I add 7 on the right-hand side, x ends up equaling positive 7. So the two potential answers are negative 8 and 7. But the only way to know for sure is to substitute them in. So let's substitute in the negative 8 for x. So in place of x, going back to this x and this x here, in place of x, we're going to put a negative 8 equals the square root of 56 minus negative 8. And over on this side, we're going to put a 7 in place of x. So 7 equals the square root of 56 minus 7. Okay, this left-hand side, negative 8 is going to equal square root of 56. Now, negative times a negative is a positive 8. Negative 8, and then 56 plus 8 is going to give me 64. And the square root of 64 is 8. And you can see that 8 does not equal negative 8. Therefore, negative 8 is actually a, an extraneous solution. It doesn't really work in the result problem, so it's not a solution. So you've got to discount that. Let's go back to the other one. 7 equals, and now 56 minus 7 is going to end up giving me 49. And then the square root of 49 is 7. 7 equals 7. That works out. So the only solution we end up having here is 7, not negative 8 and 7. Okay, for our last example here, we're going to show what happens when you get end, up, end up with a quadratic, but you have to also foil the, the problem or multiply a binomial. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is you notice that the, the squares are already, the square root is already isolated. So I'm going to raise both sides to the second power. And here's where the problem is slightly different. The right-hand side is simply x plus 18. The left-hand side is 2 minus x times 2 minus x. So if I do 2 minus x times 2 minus x off the side here, the 2 times the 2 will give me the 4. The 2 times the negative x will give me negative 2x. The negative x times the 2 will give me another negative 2x. And the negative x times the negative x will give me a positive x squared. So when I simplify those, I end up with a negative 4x here, a 4, and a plus x. And I'm just going to put those, or x squared, I'm going to put those in standard form. So I'm going to bring the x squared out in front. So x squared, then the minus 4x will come next, and then the plus 4 will be at the end. Now, just like any quadratic, i got to force this thing to equal 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract x from both sides. And that will end up giving me x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 18. And then I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides. So x squared minus 5x and 4 minus 18 is going to leave me with a negative 14 equals 0. Now i got to go back and solve by factoring. So I'm going to try and factor these two. Again, the only way you get an x squared is an x times an x. And then i got to find the factors of negative 14 that have a sum of negative 5. So the first two that come to mind are a 2 and a 7 have a difference of 5. But when I add them together, I've got to have a negative 5. So if I add 7 and 2 to get a negative 5, that means the 7 has to be negative. So one of them is x minus 7, and the other one is x plus 2, or is my two factors. Again, i got two factors multiplied together to give me 0, so one or both of them are equal to 0. So I'm going to set both of them equal to 0. So x minus 7 equals 0. x plus 2 equals 0. The first one is x equals 7, and the second one is x equals negative 2. So those are the two potential solutions. But the only way to know for sure is to substitute them back into the problem. Okay, so I'll do the first one on top. So that's going to be 2 minus and then 7 equals, and I've got 7, square root of 7 plus 18. So 2 minus 7 gives me negative 5. I have a feeling this one's not going to work. And then the square root of 7 plus 18 is 25. And then the square root of 25 is 5. Remember, we only take the principal root when we do these problems, which is positive 5. So negative 5 does not equal 5. Therefore, negative or 7 is not a solution. So I want to try it again with the negative 2. So 2 minus negative 2 equals. And then I've got negative 2 plus 18 on the radical. The left-hand side is 2 plus 2, which is 4. The right-hand side will give me the square root of 16. And the square root of 16 equals 4. 4 equals 4 is correct or true. Therefore, x equals negative 2 is the only solution we have.